Hey everyone, Laura Joseph here at the Animal Behavior Center. Um, saw a situation happening yesterday that made me want to come on and do a really quick um, live stream. I was gonna put it, attach it to a photo, uh, but it has has to do with using aversives and, to control behavior. And what aversives are, are things that the animal does not like. So um, I didn't wanna use any other photos and some scrolling through my own photos and had a hard time trying to find <laughs> had to tr had a hard time trying to find myself using um something the animal doesn't like to control behavior um so like i said there are pitfalls to using aversive and punishment ba based methods to control behavior it's not that they don't work they do but not without their consequences. And science shows that when you, reinf when you reinforce an animal for behavior you want to see increase, the animal learns faster um, than if you t consistently telling the animal what not to do. Around here, you will very rarely see us tell an animal what not to do for several different reasons. And one is because redirecting behavior and telling the animal what to do instead that'll bring reinforcement, you'll see the animal do it quickly and want to want to give you behaviors that you're asking for in the future. Um, so an aversive is anything that the animal doesn't like. Uh, if I were to use aversives with several of the animals here um, to control behavior, I'm probably going to put myself in a very dangerous situation. Um, I'm going to see a lot of, in, I would probably see a lot of increased aggression and um, some other things, apathy, lethargy. You'll see the animal start to shut down. Um, that is something we definitely do not want to see. Um, you'll see, and I clearly see how animals understand better through um, reinforcing behavior you want to see increase. Um, so here's my point. If I continually, or if someone is to tell an animal or use something the animal does not like to get an animal to stop doing the behavior it does, um, the animal is likely to stop. But here's a key thing to watch out for. There's many thing, key things to watch out for. But here's one that I saw the other day that I thought, I've got to get this message out. I've got to, not that it's not already out there, but I want to tell it in my own way. Um, say I were to punish, use a punisher to tell an animal, don't do that, stop that. Let me give an example. Um, say I were to smack Levi, Levi is our deaf dog. Say I were to smack him to get him to stop giving me a behavior, okay? Say he was, um, chewing on something I didn't want him to chew on. If I were to walk up, use an aversive, this is an aversive, this is a positive punisher. Positive punishers decrease behavior because something is introduced and whatever is introduced is an aversive. It's always an aversive. So this, if I were to add this to the environment to get the future behavior of Levi to stop chewing on something. Um, here's a key point. If I don't see the animal understand that contingency, that meaning that if the animal does not understand this smack is coming to get you to stop chewing on whatever I don't even want you to chew on, the message is lost. So, for example, I walk in and I smack Levi because he's chewing on something. The next time I walk in the, Levi, in the living room and I walk by Levi and he cowers and walks away, that is proof to me he does not understand the contingency. He does not understand what the deliver, the delivery of the positive punisher of that smack was. That makes me want to cry because I see it used all the time. And the communication is there. Um, that body language from that animal is telling me that animal does not understand why I just delivered this. He's parry, he, and this is one of many falls out, fallouts of using aversives to control behavior. Um, that use of that aversive is paired with me. 
And I know for an absolute fact that using a positive reinforcer, redirecting behavior, and then positively reinforcing the alternate behavior um, is a lot stronger. I know because I use it every single day and that is why the Animal Behavior Center exists and that is why we do what we do. Um, so hopefully that gives you something to think about at three o'clock in the morning when you can't sleep. <laughs> right Molly? So here's Molly. She is the education lemur here for training from the Indian Creek Zoo. Um, I am training her with as much positive reinforcement as possible. And the proof is in the pudding. It's there, it shows. Um, the re there's different things that I need her to do for, you coming over here, for the Indian Creek Zoo. It is based through positive reinforcement. So anyways, <laughs> I can't likely end the live stream here, right? You coming up? There you go. So when I first started training her, um, she was she did not know me. She was afraid of me. I am not going to use force and aversives to train her and control behavior um, because it's not going to bring a strong relationship with this animal. I hope that makes sense. So I, if I want this behavior to increase. I'm gonna deliver a positive reinforcer. And in the beginning, when I start working with an animal, and it was like this with her, I had to use food as a positive reinforcer because I served of no other value to her. As you see right now, she just came down off of her enclosure. And not, it's not because I lured her, because I didn't. She, I could tell she was coming over for the opportunity to engage with me. So in the beginning, I will often have to, to use food as a reinforcer, but as long as I pair myself with all the positives and as much positive, positive consequences in that animal's environment, the opportunity to interact with me soon becomes the reinforcer. Please share this message. It's an important one. If you want to see more, about the work we do, sign up for our email newsletter list at theanimalbehaviorcenter.com. We've got some coming out on preparing your animal for the vet visit. Yes, whether that's wild, zoo, or domestic. Right, Molly? All right, guys. Peace out. Good day.